Hey guys, this is Cam for 15 back at it with another video for you guys. Um, you're probably, who's that? Sorry for that interruption, guys. Um, anyways, uh, weird open. Hey guys, it's Cam for 15 along with the Red Wolf. And uh, we're back here with another video for you guys. Now, um, you're probably wondering what happened to the video and then why is this video re-uploaded? Uh, I went out and checked the video and apparently there's audio issues and stuff like that, but um, we're gonna redo this video and uh, make this video and, you know, obviously re-review Sword Art Online episode 15. Again, uh, sucks because it wasn't my initial reaction, but I digress. We wanted better quality with our video and we're sorry on behalf of the audio issues. We will try to keep working on those earlier. It's just obviously connections, but the world with the way it is, Zoom is cracking up on us. So I'm on a, I'm somewhere else in my house. Um, Denzel, he obviously adjusted his stuff so things won't get interrupted. And I guess you could, huh? Hopefully. So are things a go? It's a go time. <laughs> okay. So after this quick break, we'll be back. So we'll be back in a few minutes. All right, guys, we're back. I know. I'll see maybe if I can edit a graphic on this. Maybe if I, I can be like many minutes later. But anyways, we're here to talk about SAO again, but this is the real re-uploaded version, but we're going to talk about SAO. So, um, Denzel, would you like to start us off with what happened at the start of the episode? Okay, so yeah, uh, what I mentioned already before, or tried to, uh, Sinon was going after uh, Victor and uh, Berkeley to, in order to save Alice and Berkeley from, from Victor. But she, she arrived just to find out that she was too late to save Berkeley. And and uh, it's just and uh, Alice like uh, sees her and like she asks, so you so you're from the real world as well. And uh, Sinon like uh, says yes, my name is Sinon. And um, she, Sinon also explains to her how uh, Vecta is still alive. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, Alice is all, is all sobbing because Berkeley died for nothing, pretty much. You can say yeah. it. So, yeah. And then, um, since I said in the last video, I'm going to say it in this video. But, um, so, uh, in that entire dialogue, um, um, the dialogue is, the, the, the audio is acting up again. Oh, well, that's fine. That's fine. We good? Yeah, okay. okay. Anyways. Um, the interesting thing here we get is, I guess, if you're a Kirito X Xenon short, um, you really enjoyed this part of the episode because, like the kiss, you kind of get a subtle kind of confirmation that Xenon really likes Kirito. It's never implied how much she likes him. Like, does she like him? Obviously, it would be stupid enough if she said she didn't like him as a friend. Um, so I guess it's implied she like, likes him, but uh, he's already taken from my my buddy's favorite girl, Asuna. But um, I did find that funny. And the conversation kind of is like, listen, Kirito is here. He wants you to do what I'm telling you to do right now. So go, I'll hold him off, and yada, yada, yada. Okay, so the next thing was uh, more battles with Asuna and Klein. Or healing or whatever, am I correct on that? Yeah, pretty much. They're, they're, they're like uh, resting a bit, I guess you can say, and they're like healing up right now. And uh, yeah, and that's and while they're talking, uh, Asuna looks. I believe this is the moment where uh, Asuna like looks up and sees a sees a certain familiar figure, I guess you could say. I don't, you can, you can take it from here. <laughs> okay. So this is when Klein goes up and he says, Asuna, don't you know who that is up there? No, 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 um, no, 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 Asuna says it, says it, asks Klein. 
does 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 he look familiar? That's oh, what she okay. Had. Okay. Well, all right. Okay. So, anyways, this is only for people who seen season one of Sword Art Online. Actually, let me get something straight. If you're watching Sword Art Online up to this point and you not watched season one, I don't know what you're doing with your life while you just skip season one. But okay, to each his own. Um, listen, if you don't remember um, from season one, there was a part and there was an episode where Kirito was looking for some kind of revival item to try to see if he could bring back his former game. No, no, Cameron. That 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 isn't where he appeared. He he appeared in uh episode six of a one of of a criminal of a murder of that apparently happened but it didn't actually happen. Episode six, if you remember. Oh no 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 what are you talking about? I know what you're talking about. But the whole thing with the dude tried to dupe his team. I got it. Yeah. I got I remember that. Okay. Anyways, the dude's team, if you remember that, um they were in this forest because they got dudes and they were being tricked by the one guy in their party. So I know Kiro and Klein were there, and Klein was definitely there too. And this is when they got like Klein wasn't there. <laughs> Klein wasn't there. there. He, yeah, he wasn't there. Only Kirito okay. and the other guys. Well, they kind of get raided by laughing coughing. Thank you for reminding me. Um, and essentially they ran into the leader. Now, we come back to the realization of the real thing, and we find out who that guy is. Mm -hmm. It's the same dude. Same exact dude from way back in season one, and we get the revelation that um, his real life is one of those American secret people, mm -hmm. which is um, understand, well, it makes sense to why when he first got into the underworld, he was on um, killing people. And it only makes sense that it's a secret government agent too. If anything, you can probably say he's psychopathic. Um, all, 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 all those guys and and their and their little group are sociopaths. Just, just yeah. Um, I just got to say, um, I think after this is all resolved, I think Austin is probably going to see if they can go arrest that guy um, because he's in Laughing Coffin and he killed people, like legit people. I know he does government stuff, but he didn't kill people on his own accord. Like, that's not good. How, how did they not come catch him? How, did, how, did, how, how was he able to, like, go for this long maybe probably because he was in the government and the american government and the american and the government, government like what is it um you know they're not just going to hand over their freaking one of their government agents to japan and let's go. Not only from what i remember i think it was only like a japan thing it wasn't to the outside world not to my recollect recollection Mm -hmm. um so maybe that's why plus like i said maybe it's because he's a government agent and he could get away with that but um yeah don't 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 ask me and that because and then you got to think about it it would probably create in the real world a war possibly between J japan and america you know and we're just being real so that too but i envision those government spies are going to get arrested because their time's gonna run out on what they need to get, which is Alice. So they're gonna, it looks like they're gonna get arrested either way. So yeah. Okay. Um, but it is interesting. We find out that the entire time he is the leader of the Black Coffee. We finally get the Black Coffee and now they're taken down. So they really are trying to end everything from the original SAO here. Mm -hmm. uh, your thoughts on that revelation, Denzel? Oh my god. It's so he ba so he basically I don't know told a lie to all the American players and pretty much and the and the new Korean and Chinese 
players coming in here too. Yeah. But go ahead. So I don't know what to I don't know what to say, Cameron, to the, to that scene actually, because. <laughs> okay. So we're good on that part too. Yeah, we're good on that part. All right. I think the next part was probably the down part of the episode slash boring slash part about Nathan Zell can say that as well. Which one? The, the middle part when it was about the one Chinese dude and the one Japan, the yeah. not the Japanese, but the yeah. Korean girl. It, it, it cuts off to like two, I guess, two people that pretty much stand out in, the, in their countries. I don't know. I don't know what, why they were focusing on those two characters specifically, but it seems like those two, like they they know something something is up apparently, like like they logged in and stuff, and they noticed like he's I, he's claiming to be the admin, and they keep and they start to question like, wait, if if he's an admin, shouldn't, shouldn't he be doing some? Shouldn't he be like I don't know, be able to you know like close close it all down and stuff? So Long yeah, uh, go but go ahead, go ahead. I guess I guess you I guess you can say that those two will eventually turn, and, and potentially maybe lead some other Chinese and Korean players to turn on the American players, which will totally change the dynamic of this war, like legit, honest to goodness. Like right now, the current objective, honestly, the current objective is to get out of the point and when they can just go out and get up out of there. But then again, at the same time, the characters in the underworld might, if they do that, they might end up dying. And all the characters can say, no, we'll help you fight alongside you guys. That would be, uh, yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah, we talk, they, they, they're definitely going to more than likely probably change sides because they have suspicions. It only makes sense. Um, so yeah. Now this is when we get, I'm definitely talking over this. I'm probably definitely going to act the same way I did in the past previous video. Okay. So, listen. I hope the audio is now. Um, we, I know for the longest time, the, SA, the SAO anime community, they asked this question after last week. How is Vector going to triumph his, how is Vector's, I guess you can say, GGO account going to triumph this STL Vector de demon god. Well, I'll be damned. They just freaking did it. I don't know if they did it from ass pull reasons or some other reasons, but they did it. Well, like I like I also explained in the other video. Maybe it's this. Maybe it's the same power as the as the god vector himself, because it's basically the same person just with a gun. Anyways, look. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. Um, okay. So, Sinon's waiting. And it cuts from whatever's going on in the main battle. the opening of the underworld. And this black ooze drops down. I kid you not. It looked like some Venom symbiote type of shit. <laughs> That's how evil this guy is. This dude reaches his arm out of this puddle of ooze, comes out. I kid you not, like he's dead himself. My <laughs> I'm not cutting in. This audio's not cutting in and out, right? You guys. You you guys should see his face in, in the previous video. <laughs> when he, no, when he, I actually deleted that video. That video's long gone. Yeah, you guys you guys should have seen his reaction. He was all like, <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay, funny aside, coming back, coming back to the funny, coming back to this part. So this guy comes out. I kid you not. <laughs> Transforms into some kind of gigantic manta ray monster. What is this? He really is God. Um, he's coming.
point out one thing to point out. This is his GGO account. Because if you remember from episode one of season three, this is what he looks like GGO. The difference is this. One, behind him, he ain't got a dagger. Not like one of them toxic daggers or anything from GGO. He got a full-on sword like he was the original yellow. Like, legit sword. And I'm like... What? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And if it isn't bad enough of how overpowered this guy is, this guy seems he's more overpowered than he was when Berkeley killed him. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I didn't know SAO likes to rip off things from Star Wars, too, from GGO stuff. But apparently, this guy's got force powers now, and he's choking the ever-living life out of Xenon. Well... We've already seen photon swords, which are pretty much ripoffs of lightsabers, so we can expect this much. So that answers your question of how much overly powered he is. And heck, in the opening, it seems he's going to transform him into a creature. Who knows? <laughs> I'm not trying to say I'm not disappointed. I'm not ranting or anything. I actually think this is pretty cool. I'm just saying, like, so, if you can just bring the MGO account like this, why aren't climbing the others account over? Okay, but we know we gotta make such so an OP ass villain only Kirito can destroy. Because let's be real, Kirito's OP. But what if it's not? What if Kirito can't beat him alone? That's the question. No, Kirito, listen. Kirito beat fucking Kayaba in season one. The game administrator of SCO beat him. Oh, with his little girlfriend. And, and the I'm pretty sure the administrator wouldn't stand a chance against Kayaba. And plus, Kirito was struggling against Kayaba, if you remember. Yeah, he was struggling against Kayaba, but he still won. And then you got to think about it. He, a few months ago, he beat freaking administrator or Quinella. And this. This uh, Strider, well, I guess he's he's no longer a victim because Sinon Sinon already knows his name. I forgot his name. His real name is Gabriel, from what I believe. Yeah, Gabe, Gabriel, but but, she, but he but he has like a in-game name, like a Strider Strider Strider's. I, I don't. Let me know. know that in the comments, please, guys, because I I forgot his name. Either yeah, I'm just gonna either call him Vecta or his real life name Gabriel. Personally, I think I'm gonna call him Vector because I think Vector is so much of a cooler name. This guy is much more. I don't know. This guy is even more powerful than Kaiba. In my opinion. Uh, at this point, he probably is. He can force choke you and put you in place. So, anyways, in the meantime, like how Asuna earlier got freaked out by seeing former Laughing Coughing leader. As we all know, we cut. As we all, if you saw earlier in the season, which I think it was episode two. Sinon had a little nightmare of getting choked out by that guy. So this only adds to her fear because the moment she saw his face, she knows who that is. And the moment she starts choking him or choking her, it's like she's reliving her nightmare in real life. Or in the underworld. <laughs> yeah, that too. Now, Oh, Sinon's going to get out of this chokehold thing because it seems like she can't do nothing right now. Um, I'm saying it here and now because one thing is this. Um, where's my girl, Leafa? But that's where it comes in. Um, I guarantee you because since Leafa, when she first got there, asked Lil Finn where the leader slash Vecta was at, um, I guarantee you Leafa's gonna come in and save um, Sinon before before she kicks the bucket, even though she's technically not gonna kick her the bucket. Her account will kick the bucket. Um, but um, she'll probably come in, save Leafa this the at the last second, and then those are probably gonna get the two goddesses versus Vecta, uh, while we get Asuna versus that go- versus laughing coughing Poe guy. Um, mm-hmm. so um, yeah. Um, interesting. Can't wait for next week in terms of that battle. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. We should, um, also, we, should also, we should probably also talk about that double Asian thing. Oh, that's, that's, I'm saving that at the end. Um, 
I guess another quick notion thing to mention is Asuna is, for some reason, coughed up blood out of nowhere. I don't know why. It's Now, Klein was talking to her like it's implied, like she is exhausting herself too much or maybe she's using her goddess powers too much. I don't know why. They don't explain it. Hopefully that doesn't come back to bite her in the apparent fight against um, the Laughing Coughing leader. So you got anything about that or is that the same thing like I said? Well, I pretty much, pretty much what your thoughts is as good as mine because I also believe that it might also be her goddess powers like she's been using them too much. Like she's been healing herself a little too much or maybe she's just, I don't know pushing her body too much when it comes to fighting but i don't know man honestly i just like it like you said i hope it doesn't bite her in the back when she fights uh mr uh laughing coffin leader okay you can explain the ending scene of this episode okay so i guess they they start to get to work and uh, trying to help revive Kirito and stuff. And this is and, in the real world on the Ocean Turtle. So they have yeah. the diversion going on. The the actually the government agents see that people that the people are actually trying to intrude and do what they're trying to do. So they try to go after them. Mm-hmm. So yeah, uh, what's his face and uh, the other guy? They yeah. they go to, yeah. They and they start going down. They make it. They're they're about to they're about to do it. But then uh, that so-called I don't know if it's, he's a double agent or not. He suddenly points a gun at him, like "Don't move" and stuff. And but, that's where the episode ends off. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, they left us they left us off on a huge cliffhanger right there. Yes, a huge cliffhanger. A cliffhanger that I've been getting all week long with ReZero, Rent-A-Girlfriend. I know, I watched Rent-A-Girlfriend. Um, Food Wars, and now SAO. Um, now, me and Den- now if you didn't check out our other video, our, well, the past video, we said our theory is, is the reason why he's doing this, like we said earlier, he might be a double agent, and he might be a secret government spy that somehow infiltrated the area and dressed up as like one of the tech guys to make it look like that. Or maybe he's just afraid of dying and he's telling Higa, don't move because I'm not trying to have them make us see us or something like that. Um, which I don't know why. Um, okay. But I think Higa probably will talk him down and then he'll fix whatever he needs to fix. Like the next episode, I think it's titled like Code 871. So. That sounds like something to do with technology. That's my only guess. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was a good episode. I enjoyed it. Um, yeah, me too. And yeah, so uh, anything else to say or for predictions next week? Mm, maybe Leafa's going to finally make an appearance and save Xenon or doing something else. I don't know. We shall see. Uh, that's kind of it. That's kind of all we got to say. Um, so yeah, I think we can get out of here after re-uploading this video. So, uh, we're going to catch you guys next week for SAO episode 16 of War of the Underworld. Um, again, we are sorry for the audio issues. We'll try to work them out. Maybe I can need, maybe I might need to start waiting, putting my reviews or holding my reviews somewhere else. We'll work these things out as the weeks progress. But, uh, yeah, other than that, I'll catch you guys. Well, we'll catch you guys in the next episode review. So till then, guys, hopefully you guys are staying safe out there and also enjoy baseball since baseball is back if you're fans of baseball. Um, other than that, I'm going to catch you guys in the next video and, okay, and hopefully you guys are staying safe out there. Peace. Peace.